There are two types of ticks, those with an upper body shield and those without. Those with a shield are called hard ticks, and soft ticks when they do not have a shield. Thank you for coming to Vet Kayla. My name is Emma. Within the hard ticks, or also called exodity, is the most common tick of the dog, called Rhyphocephalus sanguineus. The female tick is characterized by being grey in color, and being larger than the male. We have to bear in mind that ticks are blood-sucking, that is, they feed on the dog's blood. According to the number of ticks that feed on the dog's blood, there may be anemia. Anemia will lead to a decay of the pet, they not only cause damage by drawing blood, but also by transmitting diseases. They transmit Ehrlichia and Babesia, two parasites that affect red blood cells, leading to a very pronounced anemia, which often requires blood transfusions and other times can lead to the death of the dog. The cycle begins with the female tick, which we can find in the grass, in the corners of the walls and on the walls that have exposed brick, which are not plastered. These female ticks are going to give about 3,000, 4,000 eggs. Larvae will come out of these eggs, these larvae have three pairs of legs and climb the dog. They are located in the interdigital space of the legs of the dogs, then they feed on and off the dog. They go to the pasture and they are going to undergo a molt, this means that they go to another state. They will go on to the nymph state, which has four legs. This nymph will go up to the dog again, it will feed and after it feeds it will go down again to undergo the next molt. The nymph is now going to become an adult, and in the adult state we can already differentiate the male and the female, which will go up to the dog again. In the dog they will feed on blood, then the male and female meet and copulate. Once the female has eaten, she has a belly full of blood, she also copulated, she is going to get off the dog and look for a place between the bricks or in the grass, to deposit the eggs, and so the cycle begins again. Where can I find ticks? We are going to find the tick in the interdigital spaces of the dog, on the inside and outside of the dog's ears. Also around the eyes, on the neck, in areas with little hair such as the armpits and groin, and also under the tail. In the environment we find them in the grass, in the corners of the walls and on the walls that have exposed brick. How can we do the treatment? We do it in two ways, one treating the environment, and the other way is treating the tick that is present on the dog. To find the tick we have to take into account two seasons in the year, winter and the second half of spring. In winter we have 5 degrees Celsius temperature, and in spring we can have 20 degrees. During the winter, the tick will be present in the form of metalava and methanymph. In the transition between the lava and the nymph, there is the metalava. And in the transition between the nymph and the adult is the methanymph. The metalava and the methanympha allow the tick to live in environmental conditions that are not suitable for it to continue its cycle. When spring arrives, the metalava becomes a nymph and the methanymph becomes an adult. Then the nymph and the adult raise the dog, and in the dog they continue their cycle. In the environment we have liquid antiparasitics, which we have to dilute in water, always following the indications of how much water we have to use to dilute the antiparasitic. With that dilution, we have to wash all the floors, and we also have to wet the walls where we see the ticks. We have two important moments in the dog, when it is a puppy and when it is an adult. In the puppy we can use the antiparasitic that comes in powder, and we move it through the body of the puppy. We can also use a spray, to directly affect the tick that we are seeing. Both have a relative efficiency, capable that they do not kill all the ticks that you find, but we cannot give anything else on the puppy. In adults we can already use several products, first we can use the liquid antiparasitic to bathe the dog. The dog has to be dry beforehand, we bathe him with the correctly diluted antiparasitic in liquid. Then you have to let it dry on its own, we don't have to use towels. Another product that we can use in adult dogs are pipettes. Remember that we have to separate the hair, and it has to be placed directly on the skin, not on the hair. If we place it on the hair, the product will be wasted. It is very important to place it on the skin, 
and that you do not have to bathe five days before or five days after. This is because the antiparasitic that comes in pipettes is distributed throughout the rest of the dog's body, thanks to the fat present on the dog's skin. If we bathe it and remove that fat, the antiparasitic will not be distributed correctly in the pet's body. Something very important to keep in mind regarding pipettes is that the pipette for dogs is for dogs. And the cat pipette is for cats. Do not use the pipette for dogs to deworm cats to avoid poisoning. There are also antiparasitic pills to give them in the mouth and to eat it. There is a brand called Nexgard, which I usually recommend when the dog is full of ticks, it removes them completely. If your dog has few ticks, a pipette is already more than enough. There are different drugs that are used as antiparasitics, the most common are organophosphates, the combination of pyrethroids and amitraz, and also fipronil. I send you a big kiss, and see you in the next video.